This video is dedicated to Outlaw. Outlaw, thank you for supporting the EDH channel. Umori the Collector, Relentless Rats versus Kineo Sintiro of Miletus, Galter Primal Hunger, and Kresh the Blood Braided. Only two basic forests in this deck, and we draw into one of them. So let's mulligan that and try and get into some black mana. Alright, that's a lot better. Uh, I think we just ditch a Relentless Rats there. Got some redundancy in hand thanks to the Jet Medallion. Oh, actually, we don't have to discard it all in multiplayer, do we? We get a free mulligan. A right, turn one play in Lanoir Elves coming from Galta. And then another turn one play in Concordant Crossroads. I don't think I've ever seen a turn one Concordant Crossroads. Seems like a risky one. Anyway, we'll get down the bayou. An Elemental Bond on turn two from the Mono Green player. And, oh, Kineo Sintiro misses a land drop there. That's not good. Uh, we're just hoping that we can get into another land for Cultivate next turn. Worst case scenario, we can at least get a Relentless Rats down. And an Arcane Signet comes down from Drone of War, who is a patron of the channel. Big thank you to Drone for supporting us. Crash the Blood Braided they have brought to the table. And then we've got a couple of randoms that we're playing against today. Yeah, apparently they kept a one lander over here. I'd love to know what's in their hand to make them keep a one lander. Like I said, Concordant Crossroads is really risky to just run out. Uh, we will poke them for two off of a Relentless Rats. Unfortunately, not getting ourselves into another land because I would really like to cultivate into a couple of swamps. And then we can get multiple Relentless Rats down in one turn. Sakura Tribe Elder for Drone. Into a Sol Ring and a Channeler Initiate. This is one hell of a deck that the Mono Green players brought. I mean, Mono Green's really good anyway. But they get to draw a card thanks to Channeler Initiate coming down. And then thanks to the Crossroads, they can tap that for mana immediately. So we might be seeing the big dinosaur come down sooner than we'd like. Eternal Witness takes them back into Harmonize, which I don't think they can cast this turn. Well, they can't get into a land, but they can get into Mana Crypt. Let's see if they've got a Cultivate of their own. No, it is Anvil of Bogarden. That should take them a step closer to a land, take us a step closer to one as well, hopefully. And another Relentless Rats for us. I think it's 34 that we've got in the deck. Really want to see a land here. Just another Relentless Rats, so let's ditch that one and we'll just have to play one. Take our Rats up to a 3-3. And then we'll probably just swing in. Uh, we'll swing in at Galter and we'll swing in over here. Drone will just block with the Sakura Tribe Elder. But we'll show everyone that we're trying to spread the damage around evenly. Galter decides to take it and Drone goes for the Sakura Tribe Elder block and sacrifice trick. A Deathrite Shaman coming in now, which of course has haste, so they can go for mana with that, with the Verdant Catacombs if they want to. And now a Vexing Shusha as well. I don't think... No, there's hardly any blue players at the table at all. Uh, this player has blue, but in four colours, it's not as likely that they'll have a load of counter magic, especially seeing as how it seems to be a group hug deck. I thought we were going to see Galta there, but it is Zendikar Resurgent. Uh, yeah, I don't suppose they need to rush their commander into play when it's got haste. But that will knock someone out in two turns. So we're going to have to be very careful of that. Then it is a Paradise Druid, which will draw them into a card. Deciding not to swing in with the two creatures, and now we will see if the four-colour player can manage to get into a land. Tempt with Discovery now. I wouldn't normally take my opponent up on a Tempt card. But I know full well that we're not going to draw into a land next turn, so let's go for... I don't think we have Gaia's Cradle in this deck because we don't really want that much green mana. So let's instead grab ourselves an Urborg and then we don't feel bad if we get into Cabal Coffers. We'll just have to hope that no one else has Cabal Coffers in their deck now. Uh, yeah, it might be that the Jund player has it. Well, if they've got it, they didn't search for it. They went for Yavimaya Hollow and a Strip Mine over here. Yeah, so that means that there's three lands coming into play over here. I mean, it might be that they just played into it to help out the uh, group hug player. 
but 95% of the time you should really be saying no to these, especially if you don't need the mana. Then again, grabbing a strip mine makes sense if you're going to see something like uh, Gaia's Cradle or something. Anyway, a Eureka now. Starting with you, each player may put a permanent from their hand onto the battlefield and repeat the process until no one does. Uh, yeah, well, we've got... We've got five Relentless Rats to go for here. And I think they'll each get plus six, plus six. Uh, so what will that be? They will be eight eights, I think. There is a Retribution of Ancients over here, a Rogue's Passage. Uh, we go Relentless Rats. No more permanents for the Jund player. No more permanents for the Mono Green player. So it's just us and our two Relentless Rats, I think. Oh no, there is another one over here. That is Fervor. I mean, they've already got haste on everything, so that doesn't really matter, but... You never know, this player might get taken out, so the Fervor will become useful after that. Then we will put our last rat into play, and they are all 8-8s. So that's seven of those. They block two of them, and it's 40 damage over here as far as I'm concerned. We'll just have to hope that there's no beast within or anything. Oh, and I didn't see these either. There's a Dictate of Crufix. We'll draw us another card. Smothering Tithe will get them into even more mana, so they've really gotten back into this game. Off of the back of the Mana Crypt and the Tempt with Discovery. Uh, Destiny Spinner as well will give their enchantments... Oh, it doesn't give the enchantment Shroud. It means they can't be counted. Okay. We finally get into another land, although we don't really need it at this point. Nurturing Peatland, uh, I think we can make do without. We'll just play the Bloodstained Mire and... I think we play Relentless Rats, uh, so let's pay for a Tithe Trigger. We'll get down another rat and I'm going to turn everything sideways in it, the green player. So let's see if they've got anything for us against all the rats. Well, they block one of them. And two, and then that's one, two, three, four, five, and six times nine is 54, so that's more than enough. Yep, yeah, take them down to minus 17. So definitely being helped out by a Eureka there. And I don't know what we're going to do. If the board gets wiped, we're going to need some graveyard reanimation. Uh, the Eureka going down. I mean, everyone's got an empty an empty hand at the moment. So I don't see what Eureka's going to do. But they might as well exile it and get some life. Yeah, we do have graveyard recursion and things like that in the deck. But obviously we're not doing too good a job of drawing into them. Creekwood Liege. We'll give plus two, plus two to their commander, as well as other black and green creatures. It'll give them three, three worms, as long as this stays in play as well, at the beginning of the upkeep. A time twister now, that's going to get us into seven cards, I'm more than happy with that. Although it also gives our opponent, uh, that is, 14 smothering tithe triggers. Now with six cards in hand, and a bunch of mana. Ugh, Nyx Bloom Ancient, so what's that, triple mana? Uh, you tap a permanent for mana, it produces three times. I think you do tap the treasures, don't you? Yes, you do. So that's three mana per treasure. I think it's the gold tokens that don't tap, isn't it? So they wouldn't give you triple mana from this. Anyway, they've got all the mana they could ever need at this point. So hopefully the Font of Mythos is going to help us get closer to Mana Crypt and Sol Ring, things like that. Because with Zendikar Resurgent and Soul of the Harvest, things like that, we can use Alluren and just chain a bunch of rats into play. And we'll be able to get Alluren with the Demonic Tutor if we've got enough mana. But I'd like to tutor for it and play it, preferably. Anyway, they get themselves into a Faberro Elder as well. Which is a mana for each colour amongst permanents they control. Uh, they've got one, two, three three colours among permanents. Uh, yeah, they don't have red. So that is going to be nine mana that that taps for. I don't think the mana issues are really of any concern at this point. Uh, all right. Just saying to Drone there that, yeah, that's a really weird scoop to me. I mean, it might be that they had nothing left in hand, but they didn't actually know where we were turning in sideways there. Anyway, that takes us off of our haste. I think... All we're doing here now is going for Relentless Rats. And I think we can just turn everything sideways and wing, can't we? 
Well, we'll soon find out. Yeah, the player commendably played through the game when they only had a one lander, got back into it really, really well, and then decided to scoop out of nowhere on us. I mean, maybe the two cards they had in hand were absolutely nothing, but anyway, that's the way the game went, so hopefully you all enjoyed this one. Uh, not a real game, I don't think, because of the Eureka. Um, yeah, we really want to get into Alluring, like I said, and make the game go on a little bit longer than that, but but yeah, the group hug player really, really helped us out there. Depending on the length of this game, I might put another one in here. Uh, yeah, we'll see. But hopefully you all enjoyed it. Be sure to leave it a comment and a thumbs up if you did. I'm Tribal Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching. Cats vs Rats Omori, the Collector, Relentless Rats vs Arabo, Raw of the World, Cat Tribal Kresh, the Blood Braided, and then a couple of partners in Ludovic, Necro, Alchemist, and Ravo, Soul Tender. Playing against three patrons today, and we are going to keep that one because we've got both of our colours, as well as the mana for both Patriots Bidding and Coat of Arms near enough. And a Jet Medallion as well. I was planning on getting down our commander on turn two, but with Jet Medallion we don't need to. So let's go for the turn one Sol Ring into the Jet Medallion. We drew into nothing but Relentless Rats in the last game, and I don't know if you saw that game before this one, or if it's on another video, but yeah, managing to swarm the board with Relentless Rats was a good way to take over that game. Another land for us, so in order to save us some life, we'll just go in for the Swamp, and... Yeah, might as well get down with Endless Rats, I think. A Bounce Land into Mana Crypt from Jero, who is the Cat Tribal player. They do have Kahira as their companion, but we're just discussing in the chat that we don't know if they've actually managed to select Kahira as their companion or not. As of the time of this recording, the companion rule has changed, and you now have to pay three generic mana to put it into your hand from outside of the game from the sideboard, whatever zone it's in. Commander doesn't have a sideboard, but we still have to do that in this format. Gitaxian Probe, looking at the cat player's turn now, and that is coming from GoGo. -Go. Like I said, we've got three patrons. Jero the Guru on Arabo, Raw of the World. Crash the Blood Braided, being played by Drone of War. And then GoGo -Go Batman is on the partners in Ludovic. And Ravo Soul Tender. We do get into another rat, so let's drop this land. And we'll surprise our opponents with the coat of arms, I think. So let's just drop another one of those. Then I'll wait for some cats to come down before we start going after Jero. And we can have a cats versus rats matchup. Let's go in at GoGo, -Go, the partner player. They seem to be the more uh, frightening commanders in the command zone. Although Kresh isn't to be sniffed at either. Manglehorn coming down now, and that probably goes after our Sol Ring, which puts us down a lot of mana. Uh, yeah, I mean, we just have to allow that. At least we can still get our rats down for two mana. And then we need to remember that the artifacts will come down tapped as well. Don't think we have too many rocks in this deck. Arcane Signet coming in tapped from the partner player, and they managed to make a land for the turn as well. Another rats for us. This is going to be pretty typical, apparently. Let's spread the damage around a little bit. We'll go in at Drone, and we'll take one in at Jero as well. Yeah, what we want to do in this deck, really, is to get a creature or enchantment or something down that triggers on Relentless Rats entering or being cast, and gives us card draw. And then we want to get down Alluren as well, which allows us to play these at flash speed for free. It allows everyone to cast three and below CMC creatures at flash speed for free. Um, and so obviously we can play as many of these as we have, but they give us card draw, maybe one or two cards we draw, three if we're lucky, and we just keep getting into rats and then swing in next turn for the victory, hopefully. That's the plan, but we're not doing too well with it so far. Here is Arabo, Raw of the World, the first cat coming down. I don't think I've ever played Arabo, actually, to be honest, in my cat tribal decks. Just while I remember as well, Jero did say that they only have about an hour spare to play, so hopefully 
Uh, they won't have to scoop early on us and we can get this wrapped up, but it's not looking like a particularly fast-paced game so far. Vexing Shusher coming down from Kresh with only one blue player at the table. And then sacrificing that for Life's Legacy. They will draw two cards and gain two life. Dustmantle Seer is at the beginning of your upkeep. Each player reveals the top card, loses life equal to the CMC and puts it into their hand. Can't say I mind that, to be honest. I don't think we have too high a curve in this deck. Just another Relentless Rats for us. Alright, did not think my opponent would trade in the Arabo for a rat, but apparently they are doing. And the Duskmantle Seer is blocking as well. That is also surprising. So, yeah, wish I hadn't swung in there because uh, we've ended up losing a Relentless Rat. Oh, two Relentless Rats, thanks to... Yeah, thanks to the blocks there. Apparently shouldn't have tried to spread the damage around. But we're setting ourselves up for a Patriarch's bidding later on, at least. And there we go, the first cap from the 99. Bronzehide Lion is a good one. You can give it Indestructible for two. When it dies, it becomes an aura that does the same thing. Drawn of War, deciding to play Crash the Blood Braided. Reanimate brings the Dusk Mantle Seer back, which is probably why they were so willing to block with it. So we'll have to wait another turn for... The trigger on Dust Mantle Seer. A copy artifact comes down as Arcane Signet. That does come down tapped thanks to the Manglehorn. And then they get themselves a mirror image. Copy of a creature you control. So that's two Dusk Mantle Seers. Or oh, Sylvan Library for us. That is really good. That's exactly what we want. So we're going to refill our hand quite easily if we manage to keep the Sylvan Library and the Dusk Mantles in play. Let's just hold back the Relentless Rats for now. I did contemplate having the Whip of Erebos in the deck for the lifelink, but decided not to include it. I might regret that this game. Leonin Arbiter now. Players can't search library unless they pay two generic to ignore it. That might be relevant. With us, we do have tutors and cultivates and the like. Deathrite Shaman for Kresh now. Let's see if they decide to swing in. They do not. So it looks as though we're going to get some triggers from the Dusk Mantle Seer. Let's see how much life we manage to lose here. Lose zero life to an Overgrown Tomb. And lose three life to a Necropotence. Now a quasi-duplicate on another Dusk Mantle Seer. And then they've got another one here. Where's that from? Oh, and then they went for the jump start on this as well. So I think they have to discard something. They discarded Careful Study. Uh, so yeah, now it's four Dusk Mantle Seers that we have to worry about. Might not take as much life to the Sylvan Library then. Okay, Verdant Catacombs means we can get down a Bayou. Uh, uh, what do we do here? Yeah, I think I am just going to take the life, to be honest. We are going to have to be careful, though. Apparently we're not going to need that Necropotence either. Oh, and we went for the... Ah, yeah, I was for some reason I was thinking that this was going to trigger... Oh, that's so annoying. I was thinking this was going to trigger and allow us, like, ask us if we want to pay the two. But obviously it's a static ability. Yeah, already hurting us. All right, let's just get down another Relentless Rats then. And then there's no one that we can swing in at, to be honest, because... Yeah, there's Indestructible over here. Um, yeah, I don't really want to swing in towards Kresh. Yeah, we'll just hold back anyway. Now it is... A 3-3, three, three, turning into a 6-6, six, six, and it can have Indestructible. We'll see where that swings in. Probably at us. All right, deciding not to swing in at all, so everyone's pointing nukes at each other here, apparently. And now the Great Henge comes down, so they'll be able to keep their hand full with that. Far Seek from the Jund player. Now then, again, we'll see how much damage we take from the Dustmantle Seer. It will dictate what we can do with the Sylvan Library. And that's three from a Relentless Rats. Another three from Relentless Rats. Just hoping for a Luren at this point. All right, Mana Crypt. Even more life loss for us. And then into another land. Then playing a Search for as Counter, followed by another clone. Uh, so that is a fifth. Dusk Mantle Seer. Nope, they go for the Great Henge. Which is, yeah, that's an artifact. That's why it came in tapped. Alright, let's have a look here. We can... Well, they 
Polluted Delta is useless to us, as we found out in the last turn. Uh, so let's put Relentless Rats and Polluted Delta on top. And then I'm just going to play the Swamp. Uh, uh, shouldn't really play the Mana Crypt, but... Yeah, we'll play the Mana Crypt, just so that we've got less cards to discard at the end of the turn. Oh, and also it comes in tap, doesn't it? So that means that we free the mana up there for next turn. So maybe it's just two Relentless Rats this turn. And then we try and go in for a Chroma's Memorial next turn. All right, so let's go in at uh, Go Go. Because of all the Dust Mantles, we might lose some Relentless Rats here. But I do want to land as much damage onto them as possible before they drain us out with the Dust Mantles. Seems as though they are just deciding to chump a couple of rats. Uh, we'll see if they try and take us down a rat with another block. Nope, they take a hit for six and they lose themselves a couple of dust mantles, including the original one. Uh, so it might be that they just want to reanimate that again. Anyway, Crest jumps up to an 11-11 with eight plus counters on it. Uh, there we are, a destroy all creatures in Cleansing Nova. And is that the... Yeah, that's the Bounce Land, so they can make this indestructible in response. Uh, Kresh is going to get regenerated, because this isn't one of the early board wipes that stops regeneration. And it looks like they are going to make the Bronze Hide indestructible. Yep, yeah, there we are. We've got a Patriarch's Bidding at least. Uh, yeah, so I think... I don't know. I think it might have to be Patriarch's bidding next turn. We get all the Relentless Rats back into play. And then we've actually got a means of blocking Crash the Blood Braided. Because I think it might come in at us. Although we might die to it next turn if enough if enough creatures die. Okay, Lightning Bolt going on to the Bronze Hide Lion in response. So that didn't gain Indestructible in time to survive the Lightning Bolt or the Cleansing Nova. So now the cat player has opened themselves up to Crash taking them out. Uh, yeah, we obviously don't know who they're going to target. So that's a lot of counters onto Crash. Obviously, uh, with the board wipe, not seeing the fact that the Yavimaya Hollow is in play. And uh, yeah, what's that? A 57-57. Yeah, Crash is definitely taking someone out next turn. Might even be that our opponent has Chandra's Ignition. I think that's the... I think that's the name of it. It deals damage equal to its power to every player. Might be every creature as well, I can't remember. Deciding to take out Gogo, -Go, the partner player. I don't think this has Trample, does it? So I think it's definitely Patriarch's bidding for us. And we'll just have to hope that we can survive until next turn. I mean, yeah, like I said, this doesn't have Trample yet, so... We'll just have to hope that it doesn't get Trample. Now we know of two of the cards that are on top. And there is another one. Do we want to take eight damage? I don't think we do. Uh, we've got one, two, three, and four for Patriarch's Bidding. Then we can get one Relentless Rats into play. Um, so I think we go for a Bayou with the Polluted Delta. And uh, yeah, I'm going to put two Relentless Rats on top. So we'll try again to get the Bayou. Patriarch's bidding for us. And obviously we're going to name Rat in the Relentless Rats deck. Uh, there's a Deathrite Shaman here and a Vexing Shusher. So I'm not really worried about either of those. Uh, maybe Manglehorn comes back down over here. All right, so naming Cat to get back two creatures in Bronze Hide and Leon in Arbiter. Uh... Shaman. Oh, they're both shamans. All right, that makes sense. So they get two creatures as well. Uh, the Great Henge triggers over here to put plus counters on these and draw them a couple of cards. Uh, then we might as well just go in for another Relentless Rats and hope that it'll see us through to victory next turn or close to it. Yeah, the Akroma's Memorial is going to be really good next turn. Brimaz, King of Arrest Coast now for another card draw and another plus one, plus one counter. Plus three, plus three, going on to the Leonin Arbiter. And then, yeah, they've probably just sort of given up at this point, swinging in their Leonin Arbiter at the Jund player. So hopefully that doesn't free them up for a tutor. 
Anyway, they're deciding to just block with mitotic slime, so they might not be taking out the Arbiter anyway. Nope, they do go for a double block. And then pull back, and then put it back again. And there we go, so the Arbiter will go down, both of these creatures will go down, they'll get themselves into a couple of 2-2 ooze tokens. And that puts more counters on Kresh. Doesn't really matter at this point, because if they've got a means of flinging that or dealing trample damage, then they've already got it. Mage Slayer. That is, whenever the equipped creature attacks, it deals damage equal to its power to the player or planeswalker that it is attacking. Uh, so another player is definitely going down here. Probably us, because we're the biggest threat at this point. It is us that's being attacked. We don't even get a chance to block thanks to the Mage Slayer. I blame Jero for this. And that damn Cleansing Nova. <laughs> I'm going to have to go and have some strong words with him in the Discord. But there we go. We go down to Kresh. Uh, what is that now anyway? That is a 69-69 with 66 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. We'll have to see if Arabo can manage to get into some Exile. Leonin War Leader comes down, and whenever that attacks, it brings in a couple of lifelink cats, but it's not going to be able to swing in this game. I mean, they might be able to jump with that if they can get rid of the Mage Dagger, or whatever it's called. Mage Slayer. They did draw a card from that cat coming down. Get themselves into some more card draw in Vanquisher's Banner, but that's not going to be fast enough for them. So it's just a case of passing over to Drone of War and allowing them to win this one. And I've never seen these ooze tokens before, I've... yeah. Oozes are usually like blobs of slime on the ground like that. I've never seen a more anthropomorphic type ooze. Yeah, never seen those tokens before. Okay, Retribution of the Ancients. Some minus counters, or plus counters, coming off of Kresh. On to the Brimaz. Uh, yeah, and then in response to that, the Teferi's Protection... But for some reason, Brimaz went down anyway. Uh, yeah, the cat player trying to buy themselves some time here. Now asceticism comes down and gives all of their creatures hexproof. And now they've got the retribution of the ancients held up. Uh, they only have to put one black mana into that, don't they? Yeah, that's a really good one for Kresh. So they take however many plus counters they like and they can get rid of pretty much any number of creatures at this point. White Sun Zenith, where X is 5, and holding up 4 mana, curiously. Uh, yeah, I don't think... I don't think tokens trigger these, does it? It's whenever a non-token enters that that triggers. And that's whenever you cast a creature spell, so the White Sun Zenith didn't trigger either of the card draw effects there. And then, I think they just killed the 4 floating mana, so... Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on over here. They could have gotten themselves four additional cats. Uh, although it's not relevant, is it? Because they can just swing in and kill them straight away with the Mage Slayer. Just like they did with us. Drone deciding to get rid of a bunch of plus counters from the, um, from the commander with the Retribution. And kill off some of their creatures. Uh, the cat player is tapped out here, so all they have to do is turn sideways at them. Drone goes straight in for the attack. And there we go, going down to minus 17. So yeah, given another turn, I don't think our blunder with the cracking the fetch into no land, I don't think that mattered, but I can't remember now. Uh, yeah, the main thing was the board wipe into making Crash absolutely huge. And given another turn, Crash did absolutely the right thing in coming in at us. Because given another turn, we could have gone for a Chroma's Memorial and taken out both players, I think, thanks to the flying and the protection from black. Anyway, that was a much more interactive one. I think I'm going to shove both the games together, and um, yeah, I'll be able to put timestamps in the description so you can flick through the different chapters of the game. So hopefully you all enjoy them. I'm wanting to play the Rat Travel deck again, so be sure to let me know if you want to see that. I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.